So hello everybody um, and welcome to this uh, webinar, uh, the TRI online webinar with Dr. Alexandro Nesco from beautiful uh, Romania. Um, it's the 4th of April, shortly before Eastern, and we have a really fantastic topic here um, with, with Alexandro, with Alex, and uh, it, it is about the multi-level implant, um, and it, the, the, the title of the webinar today is from um, back to the future with multi-level uh, implants. So um, Alex, um, he already was um, um, involved in the TRI implant system since a long, long time. I always call him the godfather of the tissue level implants of TRI because we met and uh, uh, Alex was already placing the first um, TRI tissue level. I think everybody of you who know TRI knows that the a tissue level implant is a pink uh, has a pink uh, color so um, um, Alex is using the tissue level implant the classical tissue level implants of TRI since um, um, many years and also and what what we talk um, a lot today about is the multi-level uh, TRI implant the tissue level implant of the matrix system but uh, before I introduce you more to, to Alex, um, I would like to tell you um, the, the rules of this webinar. By the way, my name is Holger Kast. I'm the head of um, TRI um, um, Training Education. And, um, and the rules for this webinar is very simple. You have on the right side a toolbar for the, from the GoToWebinar tool, and you can write uh, the whole presentation. You can write your, your questions in this, um, in this uh, question field. And I try to moderate everything in the end of the presentation of Alex. Um, I will moderate everything um, um, to Alex. And um, if we do run out of time, we will make sure that you will get an answer even after the presentation. And, and we will send you an email and answer your questions um, uh, for sure also after the webinar. So before I pass the words to Alex, I would like to introduce you a little bit to TRI. Uh, TRI is a, a Swiss-based implant company. Uh, we are um, uh, more than uh, 12 years in the market, and this is our philosophy. And you can see here, uh, on the, on the left down here, it's uh, the simplicity. Simplicity is one of the key points of, of, of TRI. We uh, really try to simplify the life of you as dentists and also as of dental technicians in any uh, developing we do. So we have a very lean product portfolio. We have one surgical kit for five different implant types. Um, so it's a really simple workflow um, in, in the system. We are 100% Swiss uh, quality. We, we are based in Zurich. Uh, I'm just looking out of, uh, to the Zurich, uh, the lake of Zurich. It's beautiful weather. And, um, and we also have a production site in Zurich. We always invite everybody at this point to come to Zurich, give us a note, and we will show you the production site, which is very close to the airport in Zurich here. And we, we, we have a great performance. Uh, we really uh, try to, to perform in any product we develop um, uh, to the maximum. And um, the Think Digital, this part down here, I think this is uh, the most important part. This is the future, uh, the digital workflows. It's uh, the big topic also today of Alex. Um, he will explain you really uh, some really nice um, um, tips and tricks in his presentation about the digital workflow, how this changed your life, how you can reach aesthetic um, results and so on, um, especially with the matrix tissue level implants. So the matrix um, is here already on this first picture, our newest invention. It's the first world's first digital implant. Um, it's based on the whole, whole, uh, whole digital um, um, technologies and it, it, it allows to eliminate, for example, abutments. We don't need abutments with this tissue level and, and, and digital implant uh, anymore. We don't need cement anymore. So we do not need cementing uh, any tie bases uh, or crowns on top of tie bases. And we have no limits with this system anymore. And um, so, so why is this possible? What did we do in the developing of TRI? So you can see here on the left side, we call it the old world of implants. Implants are more or less unchanged. The design of implants are more or less unchanged. The connection especially uh, since many, many years. And you can see here on this side, the old world of implants. You see here 
octagon connections, hexagon connection, very steep, more taper connections. This is this is what we developed in the last uh, 20, 30 years of implants. And but in this time, the new world entered into implantology or in the, into the dent dentistry. And this is, for example, materials like zirconia. This is, for example, CAT CAM technology. So, so in our days, I'm a dental technician myself, but in our days, the machines can create uh, almost more exact and accurate uh, crowns uh, than, than we could it in the whole old, old world. And so this, these machines and these uh, materials and also 3D printing machines, all this is the new world. And what we do in our days, uh, implantology, we combine this old and new world with so-called tie bases. So, so to go into the steep, more taper connection, as you can see it here, very steep inside, to fit zirconia inside, we need to add uh, a tie base, and then we go with cement, with cementing part, we go on top of this tie base, and this is still, let's say, kind of a crutch. It's let's say it's a, it's a combination, or we, we it's a mismatch between these two worlds because uh, we cannot work with these new techniques like um, uh, um, CAT CAM and also with the materials directly in the implant. That was the idea of TRI to say, hey, we have to do uh, uh, um, something here, and that was the beginning uh, of this beautiful looking uh, matrix implant and the matrix implant connection. You can see this here where by turning, we have one rotational lock. It's everything very round and smooth designed. We have a really round uh, entering into this into this um, um, inner connection. And that's why it's possible to mill directly into this connection with um, this new world CAT CAM machines. So let me go in the next slide. Why we cannot uh, go with zirconia directly into old world and old fashioned implants is because um, you can see this here. This is, should be a, a drill like any 5x milling machine, for example, has it. But a drill is round and it can only round uh, a move. And so that's why when you mill, for example, as it's here in this video, a hexagon, you always have a little bit uh, the problem that you cannot mill sharp corners. You cannot mill really in this old fashioned design. You cannot mill so accurately. You can get a rich breast fitting, which is poison for zirconia and so on. And so we, as CRI, we, we uh, um, um, thought about all these problems, what you get, or all these um, 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 situations, what you have with a 5x milling machine, and also with the situation, physical situation of zirconia. And that's how we decide uh, to have this round uh, looking uh, implant design. You can see here on this um, uh, just fully uh, milled CAT CAM uh, design, first of all, design. A, a crown here and then this connection this matrix connection this is really showing a before sintering a crown this part is is designed by an stl file and 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 the stl file is milled and you can see still rough surfaces and this is what a milling machine does when you send an stl file of an exocat or three shape on the milling machine it mills you uh, let's say a, a surface like this but also the matrix is not only designed by TRI, but means the physical connection. It's also having implementing a lot of um, so-called milling strategies, which make it possible that any random milling machine, even chair side milling machines, can mill this perfectly looking, really smooth surface, and we get uh, we reach a totally perfect um, 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 connection here by milling this connection with uh, any random uh, milling machine in the market. So today, as I said already in the beginning, Alex, um, our uh, the tissue level godfather of TRI, he is talking about tissue level implants. Um, we, we, I would like just to, to tell you, we, we also have in the matrix implant, we decide uh, we have a, a, a totally uh, nice design here. This concave design makes it that we have, and also this also this reverse taper design of, of 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 the diameter of the implant, and then having a reverse taper uh, makes it possible to have no compression of the cortical bone like it is with a classical tissue level implant. You have always a, a, an outcoming like this, and so you, you when you want to place it a little bit more subcrystally, um, uh, you get with 
classical implants, uh, tissue level implants, you can always um, have a stop more or less at the cortical. And here with this concave design, we have also from the outside a totally new fashioned um, uh, multi-level uh, t um, uh, tissue level implants and uh, the next thing which is very important which we know since many years and um, uh, that TRI has always a, th a pink um, anodized surface and this is also uh, that's why it's also a tissue level implant which you can use absolutely in the aesthetic zone and from this moment I think I pass the word to Alex and, and please, Alex, uh, go ahead. I will make you as a moderator. Please, maybe you can introduce yourself already, and then we can start with the uh, our day's topic: back to the future with matrix multi-level implants. Matrix, uh, Alex, are you here? Yes. Hello. Mm -hmm. So, hello. so we, we please, please go yeah. ahead. I, I will make you as a moderator. No worries, and you can already yeah, start. Please. I cannot see the cameras for the moment. Ah, okay, so now you could you could start to be the moderator. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, we can see your screen. All everything. Right. Good. First of all, just a second. We missed the beginning of. Okay, everything is cool here. Uh, great. When, when you do it on full screen, we can start uh, with the presentation. All right. So uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Uh, even you know, I am not a big fan of uh, of webinars because we are not able to interact in the right manner with the um, audience. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to um, uh, speak about this new concept of uh, the matrix tissue level implant. My name is Dr. Alexandri Onescu. I'm from Bucharest, Romania. I'm practicing uh, dentistry for 21 years already. So being a godfather, now it's uh, becoming more uh, accurate as a, as a term from your side. Uh, now I can look on the window and I can see a beautiful weather in uh, Bucharest. This picture I took uh, with the Arch of Triumph as Bucharest used to be the little Paris. Um, I am uh, part of a bigger team uh, and I'm very proud of my team that allows me to um, organize all these type of um, cases, courses and uh, also being there with um, uh, patients, friends, and families. Uh, we are now about 15 years since we started with this team, and uh, we have two offices in Bucharest, and we are somehow uh, focused on minimal invasive uh, dentistry. Now, in the last uh, couple of weeks, we got involved with um, supporting the refugees from Ukraine. As you probably know, we are bordering Ukraine. And I also received a permission from uh, the organizer to use this uh, presentation as a charity next week for this uh, dentist for refugees organized in Romania by uh, an online platform. So um, in the last 15 years, we were having a lot of uh, strategies, but more or less, we had to decide about the implant selection strategy. So there are many ways to choose an implant, like uh, brand-oriented, cost-oriented is something that it's getting more and more important because of these uh, times that we are living in. And of course, this can be developed also in affecting the quality of the treatment. Also, there is a very important uh, aspect regarding the research history of, uh, of uh, an implant. But last but not least, we are more focused about the concept. So 15 years ago, we decided to go into one concept, and this concept was related to the tissue level implants. And 
if someone would have asked me about four years ago about my opinion on digital dentistry and digital um, implantology, I would have responded very, let's say, not very optimistic about uh, the advantages that this type of uh, treatment will uh, would have give to us. But after starting using um, the digital uh, technology in the last years, I am now, let's say, very happy to say that this technology is supporting and helping us. But it is very important to understand that technology is not everything, especially in medicine, especially in, from our point of view, in uh, implant dentistry, because everybody should start from the beginning, should first understand biology, the concept, and then use the digital world and the digital uh, technology as a support, not just as a solution. Having said that, we are now in uh, the second year of the use of the new tissue level uh, implant from CRI the matrix, which allowed us to change to change a little bit the concept, the uh, workflow concept and the prosthetic concept by still respecting our biological means. And as you will see in later in this presentation, this is a very versatile implant that allow, allows to um, respect our biological concept and also be up to date in the digital world. So Matrix is for full digital protocol, flapless implant placement, immediate implant placement, immediate or early loading. The advantages of Matrix is that there is no abutment and no cement. So it's basically the, the crown and the prosthetics is coming straight to the abutment, to the, to the neck of the implant without any abutment. So there is no uh, intermediate interface. Uh, having a direct connection to the implant, as Holger explained, there is the versatility of the emergency profile due, due to the concave profile. And there is a very good biological and aesthetic integration that is uh, brought from the tissue level implant. And it is somehow a limitless option for uh, our needs in, uh, in uh, nowadays in ontology. After 15 years of uh, using only tissue level implants, a digital update was necessary. And uh, I'm going to show you how we switched a few years ago from analog to digital by showing two similar cases. All the time, even more than 10 years ago, we were considering uh, implantology as a prosthetic driven um, specialty, such as we all the time had uh, the consideration for a backward planning and the project before having the implant placed. So in the analog era, we had a wax up and with the wax up, we were centering uh, the middle of the implant. And through that middle of the implant, we were uh, free handed inserting the implant. After some years, so about three years ago, the protocol has changed. So we started using some uh, guided uh, surgery and I tried to find a similar case showing how was difference and the similarities between a case done after uh, nine years. So uh, the same concept, the only difference is that in the latest case, our backward planning protocol was based and uh, taken out from uh, digital WhatsApp instead of uh, wax WhatsApp. So uh, we are using, let's say, the easiest uh, and uh, most convenient uh, way of uh, guides 
and we use for the moment only the initial uh, drilling through the guide. Having uh, so many years of experience in uh, uh, free-handed uh, flapless insertion, it is not, uh, let's say, necessarily a, a problem to go on for the rest of the stages. But of course, if you find the right uh, uh, system of uh, fully guided, it is something that uh, can work. So we started with a um, um, software that was available at that time for free. And we designed the crown as a digital workshop, and for that we created um, the surgical guide. And this is a comparison between the freehand and the guided um, insertion. You can see we inserted the implant right in the septum, also while doing this freehanded more than 10 years ago, and also with a um, guided surgery. After having this type of uh, results, and after, let's say, thinking about which system to go with for uh, almost one year, then we decided that this digital technology would be beneficial. So even I was very stubborn before that, uh, then I started to change my mind a little bit and tried to uh, keep my mind on biology, on the same backward planning concept, and uh, use the technology to maybe improve our uh, outcome when we had a, maybe a difficult, more difficult case. But in the end, we finalized such as we use the surgical guides now for every case. You can see the adaptation after uh, eight years of the cemented crown. These crowns were cemented directly on the neck of uh, tissue level implant. The only implant that allow now to do this without cement is the matrix. So the advantage that uh, only tissue level implants were offering for many years, like placing the crown directly on the implant neck is now um, showed also from the matrix and you are going to see uh, the exact cases. So here is a comparison with our very old case that we did in a, a similar way. And you can see the uh, soft tissue integration after eight years and the new one after one year and the X-ray with a tissue level implant in the crown that was at that time cemented on the implant. And again, 10 years follow up and three years follow up for the digital case. Here, it's a CBCT after 10 years of the case that we did uh, freehand. Now, moving forward, a protocol update. So what we can now have in our everyday practice, we can generate the plan and the concept of, of, uh, of final restoration from the beginning in a digital way, such as we have, let's say we shorten the period of uh, from discussing with patient until we actually do the surgery. And the most beneficial way, uh, thing is that we really do the surgery one more time in a digital way. But for that to happen, you need the one who is doing the surgery need to be the same person uh, planning and doing the um, uh, digital planning and surgical guide. So I can show you a case where from where we started. So before having any surgical plan, we did our our uh, digital wax up, the backward planning. Now we are using uh, Implant Studio from Tree Shape. I think it's the let's say most accurate software it really makes a difference uh, when uh, using it in terms of uh, accuracy and uh, real reliability cbct alignment scan it's aligned with a cbct 
then we are uh, projecting the implant based on our initial um, digital laptop. Having that, we create the surgical guide and we use it during the surgery. And we get the exact situation that we are anticipating. Of course, for this case, we had to do a small bone splitting because it was a narrower uh, crest and we used uh, some more gears, uh, not only the surgical guide, the person drills, piezo of surgery and uh, very uh, tiny incision to do that. Then with the project already done before the treatment, we were just adjusting it after the also integration into the final uh, restoration. So this digital approach is helping us coming from a project to the final restoration in the exact uh, manner of uh, the first two cases that you saw, but having the digital simplicity uh, protocols in our hands. And this is the implant stability after also integration before screwing here the crown. So this is a screw chain crown. For this case that we did fully digital, we only printed the models just for, um, for um, the presentation reason. And it's three years follow up for the same case. Everything is in place with the tissue level implants, and you can see there is no bone loss around the implant and the emergency profile and the continuity with the tissue level implant. Now, one other uh, thing that we started using for the digital protocols is for um, fully adentrous. And I can show you why, because it's uh, an 80 years old patient that we decided to place for implants for uh, over denture on the locators, of course, tissue level implants. And we needed only probably 20 minutes if each half arch to do this in a very, let's say, straightforward manner. So we digitally organized uh, like a prosthetic, prosthesis base, very accurate on, on the crest. And through this, we inserted the implants. And how did we scan? We used the sleeves from uh, TRI that we stick with cyanoacrylate on uh, mucosa we scan each our scan and we did the cbct in the same uh, 10 minutes making sure that we don't lose the uh, titanium sleeves and then we generated the plan and here is the guide here, um, we had to make sure that we have uh, three points for um, putting together the HR oral scan and the CBCT scan and using that three um, radio pack sleeves that we sticked with cyanoacrylate on the fixed gingiva helped us do this without any other, uh, let's say, suffering from the patient. And here is the final result. And you can see that there was a full accuracy and for a patient, 81 years old patient, uh, when you do it uh, very fast and flatless and there is no uh, side effect for uh, during uh, the surgery and after the surgery, then you can really improve the quality of life and your oral health. And you can see the final result and the overdenture. Now, continuing with 
our main words, the tissue level implants and simplicity, I tried to explain a little bit the comparison between uh, natural implantation and uh, tissue level implant. This was described in 2003 by Anthony Scar, and it's something that is uh, biologically available regardless uh, time change, meanwhile. So there are so very important advantages of the tissue level implants. They are very reliable and close to the biological concept that the uh, height of the collar is uh, the equivalent of the biological width, generating a predictability and stability in both analog and digital worlds and uh, also are having a good aesthetic and functional stability because with a tissue level implant once it's uh, integrated and i'm not talking about also integration i'm talking about uh, mucosal integration there is no change in the level of the integration it's like uh, it's from where the dennis turner concept of one abutment one time occurred so he basically transformed the bone level implant into a tissue level implant without uh, touching the surrounding um, um, tissues. Now about the metrics, the digital update and uh, how TRI is uh, naming it a multi-level implant. Basically, it was part of a group study that we were able to use these uh, um, implants and analyze them in clinical cases and take, um, let's say, observation of the advantages. And this was uh, last year in June when it was officially launched in Zurich. And I'm not going to uh, go through the um, technical detail, but it's very important to understand that it's designed for a digital approach and there is this slight change of uh, the neck of the implant with a concave design that can be used in a different uh, levels above the bone it's still a tissue level implant and these are the technical details that uh, shows that this type of uh, prosthesis it's um, directly fixed into the implant. I'm going to start with a case where we had a very narrow mesodistal space and we still wanted to go for a um, flapless approach. Of course, these are cases where digital helps us a lot if you do it properly and there are no uh, mistakes in planning because it helps in this type of narrow space it helps still going flapless and also having the um, advantages of uh, a minimal invasive approach and the biological approach in the same time now there were many discussions about flapless implantology and before starting using myself the digital approach uh, three years ago, I had different uh, contradictions with uh, other colleagues in terms of um, how safe is flat, was flat, flatless while doing it uh, without a computer guide. And of course, with uh, good knowledge of um, anatomy and of course using um, uh cbct exam and using the two fingers as a big digital touch on the crest it was possible for us to deal with the, most of the cases for uh, almost 13 years um, until we got to the computer guided technology and honestly it took me almost one year to double check all the cases that we start doing digital to make sure that I am able to do them at least at the same level of accuracy how I did them before that in the 13 years of uh, freehand. 
now we can i can say that we can uh really rely on the technology as i said there is a super accuracy of this uh, implant studio and also for us as we are doing in our team we are doing ourselves the full protocol from scanning the cbct the planning everything and printing everything is done like in-house it's like when you do the surgery two times one in in virtual life and one in real life and then in this case flapless becomes really safe I wouldn't do any case other than flapless if a clinical situation like uh, fixed gingiva or everything else permits, because it does make sense for us to cut the periosteum and annihilate all his all its um, let's say advantages of uh, of biosimulation. So this was the case. The, tissue punch was taken out. We used the biological drilling that we adapted from Eduardo Anitua. It's uh, less than 100 um, rotations per minute with the drill without irrigation. This way, when we need, we can even take some autologous bone and the flapless in insertions through the um, uh, tissue punch. And this is how the final result is. As you can see, there is still untouched part of soft tissue. And this is the CBCT after implant placement and the implant angulation that was beneficial for the future crown to try to make as small angulation as possible. Even so, this crown has an angled uh, screw access and it is no abutment, no cement. So it's fixed directly inside the implant platform. And here you can see the X-ray and even the space for soft tissue and how we were able to finalize this type of uh, case in a very narrow space. And the prosthesis, of course, is respecting the concept of five millimeter points from the contact point to the bone crest for uh, simulating in long-term the interproximal papilla stability. It's also um, publication from Denis Tarno published many years ago in 92 and it's still available because it's biology and here a cbct scan one year after the tissue level metrics everything is in place now moving forward we had a case with uh, already inserted three octa tissue level implants prior six year six years to the situation that we are showing now everything was fine but uh, there was a problem with a neighboring uh, mesial premolar so tooth 24 had an indication for extraction and on 25 and 27 position we had a uh, cemented bridge on tissue level implants six years in service from uh, three octa for this case we as you can see the angulation of uh, the natural root is quite high so what we did we used the digital technology so we we scanned before the initial situation, such as we have the exact morphology of uh, the natural dentition, and we used it also for designing the surgical guide. 
we also had in mind that the patient was 76 years old at that time, so we wanted to be as uh, less traumatic as possible. The protocol is the same. We use the first drills to the guide, then we use the Versa Burst for uh, also densification in these cases. And here is the matrix inserted and it's final position. You can see here, there is a gap because of the shape of the premolar alveola that we had to fulfill and use our open healing concept. What does open healing mean? Basically, we fulfill the gap with BIOS and then we cover BIOS with BioGuide. And when the gap is very, very narrow, we can cover, like here in the palette, it's like one millimeter wide. So with this, we can cover with cyanoacrylate, but the, the bigger gap on the buckle side, we covered with uh, BioGuide. And we there is no tension and we do it like leaving uh, the BioGuide opened for healing. So this is a protocol that uh, I learned from Dr. Taffet from Germany. And it was also described by Dennis Tarno as uh, an ice cream cone technique. And now we are using it for uh, 15 years. And here is a small sketch about the protocol. So when you are able to insert the implant, like you see, you saw in the previous slides of the case, we just fulfill the gap with BIOS and then we cover the gap with BioGuide, leaving it open. But the most beneficial um, situation for open healing is when we don't have a buckle wall and we have to uh, just make a socket preservation for that. In this case, there is no tension, so we don't cut anything. We just extract up traumatically, minimally traumatically, the tooth, and we fulfill the alveola. Then we use the bio guide as a cover without any uh, intention to put the margins together. And our last. Um, let's say publication was in January in a magazine with more than five impact factor. And we had this uh, five years follow-up with open healing and 135 KRI Okta cases. So you can just uh, take a look on, on, um, on the study and you can also see there uh, the exact description of the open healing that works very well with our uh, minimal invasive concepts. So after we scanned, we started with a surgical procedure. We extracted the tooth. We fixed the surgical guide and then with the initial drill, we are making the neo alveola. Then free-handed with the Versa burst, we were condensing the bone and then uh, inserting the implant. We double check the torque manually and then we measure the gap such as we know exactly what type of uh, augmentation procedure we choose. As I said, we are uh, fulfilling the gap with BIOS. We are condensing the BIOS around the gaps. And then before placing the membrane, we are scanning again. We use TRIOS4 for scanning which gives us uh, good results. And then we place 
the membrane without any tension. We use the PTFE suture. In this case, just to fix the membrane over the BIOS without any tension around the implant. And on the palatal part, just a drop of cyanoacrylate over the um, BIOS. And what we achieved, we achieved a personalized healing color. So basically, we were able to change the healing color with a, from a standard one to a customized one for a better soft tissue healing. And the procedure is quite simple. So you have the initial scan, then you have the scan during the surgery, and then we put both scans in our software and you can see how we generate the customized healing abutment so basically we copy the nature one-to-one -one, the emergency profile of the natural dentition and then we cut it not to be in occlusion and we are able to insert it in the next uh, 24 hours after our uh, implant placement we can use it and change the start standard abutment to a customized one here is the cbct you can see the angle of the implant that is very close to the angle of the initial uh, natural premolar Of course, when someone is seeing this type of uh, image without having the context, they can say that it's a, a crossly inserted implant, which actually is not. I mean, it's uh, in the right angulation that we need for prosthetics. That is why I would recommend to change the surgical guide to a prosthetic guide in terms of uh, terminology. And here, is our clinical situation with the um, customized abutment and you can see how this permitted the soft tissue and the zenith to, to stay in the same position where it used to be before extraction this is one very nice feature of this uh, implant and it's a very nice feature of the digital technology now going back to the initial scan after the also integration period we scan again and then we used the initial scan as a um, template for uh, our final restoration so we we're able to copy even the ab ab abrasion uh, surfaces of, of the um, old premolar. And this is the final restoration. As you can see, in this case, we were even able to use a straight channel. So for that, if we wanted to move a little bit more to the palette, the screw channel it was possible but we preferred to do it um, with a straight one and here you can see the beauty of the classical tissue level implant with a crown that was cemented you can see there is no other um, interface between the crown and the implant it's directly cemented on the implant and now with the matrix we have the same advantages of the tissue level implant but we do not have any cement of course for a tissue level implant it's not a tragedy to take out the cement since almost all tissue level implants are juxta changeable but with a matrix there is no stress for that there is no cement and it's the same uh, advantage that we have from the classic tissue level implant that we can uh, place the crown directly in contact with the implant neck and 
this is how uh, it looks and you can see there is just a screw that is coming with the implant that we can use to screw the final milled crown that we copied from uh, the premolar. And here you can see, uh, you can have a better understanding of um, prosthetic evolution in tissue level implants. So the best uh, way of, of uh, doing prosthetics on tissue level implants, and I think in, on implants in general, was with a solid abutment and the cemented crown on the tissue level implant. So this was the most reliable, and I think it still is the most reliable uh, solution ever. Then T bases occurred, and the T bases were very thick here. And for a tissue level implant, then this can be uh, also an aesthetic problem. And also the fact that it's uh, not having the same advantages of uh, the tissue level implant, like having the crown directly on the implant neck. Then TRI came with a very, very thin tie base. This is the only tie base that I like. It's a super thin one, and it's very uh, well adapted to the tissue level implant. But still, there is a, a, double, a double interface here. And now with a metric solution, what they achieved was basically they went back to the initial situation, taking all the advantages and giving one more, the lack of cement, which for most of the cases was not a problem in this uh, old type of cases. But when you have a sick gingiva biotype, then it can be a problem. So this is basically the most versatile way to fix a prosthesis of crown or a bridge, a fixed prosthesis to a tissue level implant. And I think that this is now basically generating, uh, let's say the highest end uh, solution for uh, prosthesis. And this is a close up for this no abutment, no cement tissue level uh, implant and uh, the prosthetic solution. And here is a CBCT with a follow-up. Meanwhile, we have seven years for the TRI OCTA and it was done after three months of the uh, metrics. And you can see the stability around both bone, so hard tissues and soft tissue. And here you can see even the abrasion uh, surfaces that I was mentioning about that were copied. Now, one more case where we we had to take out on the upper arch, we had to immediately implant, implant this uh, lateral incisor. And the lower arch, we had to take out these incisors, place two implants in the lateral incisors region and uh, have a, a bridge in between them. So I'm going to show you the workflow. Again, a digital workflow with the initial CBCT scan. You can see the bone. You can see it also had some apical uh, modification, but this is not a problem for this type of uh, cases. The same protocol with a minimally invasive workflow extraction, the gap, the surgical guide. And the metrics. In this case, we used a narrow metrics. Even the platform is narrower. It's the, the right uh, solution for a lateral incisor. And here is the implant in place. Of course, for this case, we had no initial tooth to scan and use as a custom abutment. So we used the standard abutment during the healing. Initially, we wanted to have a uh, immediate uh, loading, but then we decided just to stay with the early loading. And this is the CBC scan of the lower arch. And the preparation of a uh, surgical guide due to the 
very high level of uh, bone resorption, we had to think about placing uh, the two implants in a, let's say with a platform in a different position. And it's one of, uh, let's say the solutions where we can state that the matrix is a multi-level uh, implant. So you can see here is the surgery, not going to go through that detail. And you can see the stages, structure. We did not raise any flap. We just cleaned everything until we reached the level of the healthy bone. There is no uh, flap elevation, no depressation, neither uh, buckle nor lingual. And you can see it was a very big gap with a difference of uh, bone level from from uh, position 42 to position 32. The matrix insertion, respecting the concepts for tissue level implants uh, by placing the um, polished neck at the level of uh, the implant. And of course, in between the implants, we used our open healing concept, the one that you saw before. And this is uh, after the implant insertion. You can see that we had no problem in placing these two implants in a two different levels because of the advantages that we can get when we do the prosthesis. So it's a multi-level positioning of the tissue level, multi-level matrix and playing with the words. So it was the same uh, we did intraoral scanning after we placed the implants because we wanted to have, as I said, initially we wanted to place the implants uh, and have uh, immediate, uh, immediate loading, but then we decided to uh, postpone a little bit uh, provisionals. Uh, we will get very soon, hopefully, from TRI in and OSTEL, the the right pins for uh, for uh, measuring the stability, and then we will be, let's say, more confident uh, in making a decision when to load immediately. But uh, at that time, we these were not available, and we didn't want to take uh, the risk, considering of the unbalanced functional situation. This is uh, the design for the provisional that we received the next day. You can see here how a bridge on matrix looks like. And you will see that that uh, anti-rotational uh, geometry that uh, was shown in the beginning, it's not here for the bridge. Of course, it was a, an exaggerated uh, mucosal elongation that we had to cut to protect our open healing. And this is the PMMA provisional and both the crown and the bridge that we uh, decided to not to load immediately, but we, load, we loaded as early loading. And this is how it looks like. And then the CBCT scan after the early loading. So we have a very stable situation for that. You can see everything is stable. So after the also integration, so it basically we postponed with a provisional for six months and look how nice uh, everything is healed about around this uh, matrix input and how the, the crest and the ridge, the, the ridge looks like. And here you can see the final restoration with the full zirconia, the crown and the bridge with no abutment, both for crown and uh, the bridge. 
and the one year follow up CBCT scan with uh, fine restorations in situ. We can see that there is no bone loss and tissue is very stable around these implants. So with the metrics, as you saw, we got a full digital protocol with a minimal invasive approach, respecting our biological approach that we are working with for more than 15 years and generating a high aesthetic outcome. But be aware, don't be tempted to become like this controlled by technology. Use your brain and control technology. So for doctors from our audience from Greece, I will be speaking in Greece uh, in May. And here is my email address in case you want to uh, discuss anything else with me. So keep it simple, think biologically, think digitally, and thank you for your um, attention. Thank you, Alex, for uh, this uh, outstanding presentation. Um, it's always a pleasure and I always learn a lot uh, about your really accurate uh, protocols and, 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 and um, how you place um, uh, every and how you think about every implant placement. And this is really, really great and um, fantastic um, to see and uh, also your results to see. We have already some questions. Um, I would like to say hello to uh, Columbia. Um, Fernan, he was asking us uh, some question. I would like to just pass them. Do you leave the color fully over the crest or a little bit submerged? That's the first question. Yeah, me personally, as uh, I was used with a tissue level implants for so many years, I am still tempted to respect the protocol of the tissue level implants, such as uh, placing the color right, I mean, the interface between the polished and the uh, uh, treated part of the implant right at, the, um, at the, let's say, crest level. When we do not have um, relevant crest level, then the most logical way to place it is to think of uh, let's say the neighboring natural dentition and the conjunction of uh, the interface of um, of a cement and uh, an animal uh, junction and imagine that we would be uh, placing the crown to implant uh, let's say level at the same level but otherwise, my main inten intention would be to place it at the level of, uh, of the crest. Okay. But it can be now, as, as, as proven by other um, colleagues from our, uh, our international group, it's proven that it can be uh, placed even a little bit subcrestal, and the results are very uh, good and stable. So. Yeah, that, that, that's something I wanted to add here as well. We have uh, this international group of uh, first of the limit market release phase, and uh, there's uh, uh, professors which you already mentioned uh, with Linkevich, who's um, uh, he's really, really <coughs> testing this actually since since one and a half years to have this comparison between machined surface and uh, subcrestal and then above the bone. And uh, the results so far since our one and a half years are really, really nice to see. And um, so, so the design, the concave design, um, I think uh, allows this very nicely. That gives me to the next question also again from Colombia. Have you seen clinical uh, a benefit of the curved color in terms of soft tissue stability around the matrix implants? Maybe you can even see um, to add uh, from my side to the question, because we know you, you placed um, a lot, a lot of uh, TRI tissue level implants, um, um, the classic uh, implants, tissue level implants, and as well now you placed a lot of matrix implants. See, do you see some 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 benefits of uh, the tissue here, or because also maybe because of no cement? And... Uh, of course, the no cement is a very big advantage, but uh, honestly, to be able to give an honest answer, I would need 
uh, 10 years follow up to make yeah. a real good, really good comparison but uh, from uh, from the outcomes that we have until now in this uh, two year more than one year two almost two years of uh, uh, using uh, these implants i think that uh, there are significant good uh, advantages for uh, situations where otherwise with a classical tissue level implant you would have been uh, you would have needed a very very good uh, technique and with bone level implants we would have destroyed the soft tissue so i i think that uh, and i hope that uh, there will be uh, significant benefits but it is too early to use it as an official statement honestly Okay, um, there's one uh, question to the uh, great case, the single ground at the uh, Primula case, uh, where you did uh, this individual healing color. Uh, in this individual healing color, um, does this individual healing color with this copy paste technique anyhow shorten the time? Do you need? Uh, do you need um, because you have already the perfect shape of gingiva? Do you need to do for the final restoration an extra appointment with the patient for for creating the final restoration? Do you think we can skip from tissue management one uh, impression taking? Can you use the first impression did which you use for the for the healing color? Is it is it uh, shorten the time? Is the matrix uh, shorten the timing? I think it can shorten the time, especially for situations when you cannot see the patient all the time or maybe it's a long distance patient or something like that and then with a tissue level metrics uh, you are very confident that the soft tissue is going to heal around the collar the polished collar so there will not be uh, significant differences and especially when you had the design that uh, was scanned before extracting the tooth it might be uh, technically possible to uh, not to see the patient uh, uh, before that and just uh, uh, ask him to come for the final restoration using the first uh, digital impression but in a common sense world of course we will uh, probably not do that but we will shorten the time by having the um, uh, let's say exact planning uh, available from the beginning but uh, I would not recommend to to trick uh, biology or to trick the um, let's say the well-known steps in in common sense uh, implant dentistry. Okay, one last question. Um, um, do you, what do you think with um, when you have um, a fully zirconia healing color, for example? Is it a difference? From the healing uh, aspect out, uh, if you would have a polished zirconia individual healing color comparing to a PMMA uh, healing color or or temporary. Okay, here it's a uh, this is a very good question, and uh, unfortunately it will not be possible to answer it in a very short uh, time. But uh, <laughs> when we do when we do yes when we do a uh, zirconia healing now for. First of all, for tissue level implants, the best thing is that you will not be very deep with uh, with uh, healing abutment. I mean, we will be uh, quite uh, shallow because we have at least this uh, 1.8 millimeters above the bone from uh, the collar. So uh, if we used we used PMMA for our case. Of course, zirconia, it's maybe better integrated in these type of situations, but uh, we need to make to take care if we do the zirconia, uh, we need to do it, uh, we need to do it, uh, uh, let's say also glazed, not only polished like we do on a, on a final crown because we will uh have a problem of uh, fibers that might fibers, integrate yeah. on the, on the collar and then might affect uh, the healing process with the final uh, crown so uh, i think that uh, this needs to be more a little bit more uh let's say uh, analyzed but uh, having the possibility of uh, doing these things 
uh, it's a great advantage for uh, the metrics. But if you want to do it overnight, like uh, in a few hours, you it will be let's say much easier to do it in uh, in a PMMA very well uh, uh, finished. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Alex. We are already 10 minutes above the, the, the normal timeline, but before I all let you go, I, I would like to uh, um, invite you again to a uh, really great happening here in uh, the beautiful city of Athens uh, with uh, Alex and me as well. Uh, we, 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 we will be on the 20th of May. We will have a, a first presentation in the evening, evening presentation and uh, on the 21st of May we have a whole day of uh, training even with a small hands-on session uh, where we can go much deeper into the details of this matrix system and also of uh, Alex um, um, open um, healing techniques and minimal invasive healing, uh, uh, surgical techniques and um, I hope um, um, you, you are um, a part of this we have even for for those of you who uh, who waited until this moment, uh, we have a special offer. We offer you 20% discount uh, if you use the code which you see here below. Athens um, uh, slash 001 is the code, and this code is available until the 19th of April. If you want to be a part of this course, um, you can have a 20% discount. Please uh, sign up, be a part, uh, come with your um, husband or with your wife uh, to attain and uh, have a great um, um, weekend maybe in Athens and have a one day course with us uh, where you learn a lot of details of the matrix system and um, of um, Alex um, techniques. So um, from my side, I would like to say again, thank you very, very much. Um, uh, I wish everybody here a uh, happy Easter in, 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 uh, in Europe. And um, uh, um, when you have more questions and, and if you are more interested to see more about the matrix, um, please go on our homepage on www.tri.swiss uh, um, or just pass us a, an email on matrix at tri.swiss. Thank you again, Alex. Um, uh, have a good time and um, we will see us soon, uh, at least in the team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good Bye -bye. day. Goodbye.